So before we start the video, I'd like to ask you guys to please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video as it helps the channel grow. So let's get into it. All right, Bears' second preseason game is in the books. Official preseason game is in the books. And as always, I figured I'd continue with the trends of doing my winners and losers from each game. Um, this will probably be the last video for the preseason if the Bears don't play their starters. Um, but I figured, you know, why not do another one? Three winners, three losers. Let's get straight into it. What's up, guys? KT here. Back at it with another video today. We're doing the Bears. The Bears take yet another win in the preseason against the Cincinnati Bengals in a game where there was just as many. There was a lot of positives going into that game and a lot of positives coming out of that game as well. Um, a lot of talent was showcased on Saturday, man. It's, it's been fun watching this Bears team in the preseason, um, but there's been a couple hiccups as well. So we're going to get straight into that um, in this video. Um, but let's start with the winners so far of that game. Of course, we're going to have to start the list with the quarterback, Caleb Williams. Um, he's definitely been a winner throughout this entire preseason. He has shown all the talent that he showed in college at USC, and it's translated over to the NFL so far in preseason. Um, man, you just watch Caleb Williams, and it's just different how he commands the pocket, how he moves in the pocket, how the ball jumps off his hands. You know, not everybody can do what he does. And, you know, that throw to Romo Dunze, that 42 or 45 yard strike to Romo Dunze going to his left, a useless spin going to his left, throwing off body, throwing off balance, cross body, and is able to get enough strength on the ball to where it directly falls into Romo Dunze's hands. You can't teach that type of talent. Then the touchdown run as well, you know, the pocket movement, the pocket presence. You know, able to make guys miss. He's not the fastest dude in the world, but it's always that constant threat to throw when he's on the move that makes him so dangerous. And teams have to account for that. So, you know, when they do that, he just ran in for the touchdown. Again, not all sunshines and rain in rainbows going into that preseason game. He did start the game a little rough. Had a couple rush passes, you know, a couple times where he could have went through his reads a little bit more. He did miss a few open receivers. I think he missed Romo Dunze on a streak or a go route when which he was wide open and that probably would have been a touchdown. But you know, you expect that rookie QBs. Um, overall, he's been nothing short of amazing this preseason. Even though it doesn't show it on the stat sheet, you can just look at him. He's passing the eye test. That's what preseason is for. If you can pass the eye test, if you show up and play with effort, and of course you make those little splash plays, you're more than a lot to make the roster, even more so for a number one overall pick. And, you know, for franchise quarterbacks, you can tell when a guy has it. I think the Bears may have it this time. We've been duped before, but, you know, it just looks different with Caleb Williams. He, it just looks different. And I think he's the guy for this team. Um, but number one winner is Caleb Williams. Stats don't really matter to me going into this preseason game, but he did have a one touchdown. And I think he passed for like 70 yards. So, you know, good win. And, you know, Caleb Williams was a catalyst of that. Winners, I should say winners, because we had two. Um, point number two is Tyson Bajan and Dante Pettis. I don't know what got into Tyson Bajan and Dante Pettis on Saturday, but they connected for two touchdowns on the day. Dante Pettis was out there looking like an all pro. Tyson Bajan, who, who, by the way, has solidified himself as the QB number two on this team, just based on his form performance alone on Saturday. You know, they made a lot of good plays. Tyson Bajant was throwing with anticipation. You know, he showed some things like, hey, I can be a serviceable backup as well. I can win us games if Caleb goes out. And, you know, he showed that on Saturday. It looked like he took a big step forward from those previous games, um, especially, you know, from that Buffalo game and from the Hall of Fame game. It looked like he, he looked like a completely different player. Um, Tyson Bajant had looked like he improved a lot. And, you know, with the, he had a special connection with Dante Pettis. Dante Pettis was running crisp, pristine, pristine routes. Um, he was catching everything out there. He caught two touchdown passes. You know, it, 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 it felt good knowing that that type of death, especially with Dante Pettis, as, you know, wide receiver death has been a, a bit of an issue for the Bears so far. And with Dante Pettis playing like that on Saturday, even though it's against backups, 
that basically goes to show you our backups are better than most other teams' backups. And, you know, I think that's always been the, you know, the real thing with the Bears, you know, guys playing really out of position where they don't really feel comfortable at. Dante Pettis was not a starter um, a couple of years ago, and now he's kind of finding that natural role. He's really competing with Tyler Scott um, and other guys like um, like Caleb Swain and, you know, and Asimba Webster for that number five role. Um, but, you know, if they if the Bears do go in, you know, keeping at least five receivers, I think Dante Pettis definitely secured his spot on this team um, with his performance. And Tyson Badrant has definitely secured that QB2 spot. So the two winners for our, our, my number two for the winners on this list would probably be Tyson Badrant and Dante Pettis. Winner number three, got to go with my boy Kyler Gordon. Kyler Gordon just got back. Um, from being injured and man it it seemed like he didn't miss a beat he was everywhere on Saturday along with Jonathan Owens you know Kyler Gordon was our most effective DB out there Um, you know Terrell Smith got an interception you know Jonathan Owens made a lot of tackles but Kyler Gordon was everywhere he was a a monster you know in run defense he got two sacks I think Uh, no he got a sack I think and in which he laid a brutal hit just an absolutely brutal hit on the Bengals quarterback um didn't even see him coming and that's what you need from Kyler Gordon you know he showed that a little bit last year um especially in that Cardinals game where he showed he could just blitz off the edge and is able to sack the QB he's so fast that they can't get away from him or they usually don't see him Uh, he's able to play to run well and his coverage skill has, has gotten better as well um and he's perfect for what this defense need. And just imagine, we don't even have everybody playing together yet. You know, I know Tyreek Stevenson, he, I think he did play on Saturday, but he played with the twos. You know, we haven't seen Jaquan Brisker yet, and there's no telling how good he's gotten. Um, you know, Kevin Byer didn't play. Jalen Johnson only played a limited number of snaps. And then we have our pass rushers with Montez Sweat. It looks like Irvon Dexter has gotten a little bit better. And with a guy like Austin Booker on the other edge, you know, this defense has a rent, plus your two linebackers, plus a linebacker coming off the bench and Jack Sanborn. This this defense is just unreal with the talent that is oozing um, from that defense. And, you know, one more year in that system really has seemed to pay dividends for that defense. And especially for a guy like Kyler Gordon, who struggled early in his career. So it was really nice to see him back out there. His raw athleticism is is going to be pesky for quarterbacks in the regular season there's so many packages you can dial up with him on the defensive end um because of his such unique skill set he doesn't get as much shine as some of the other corners like Jalen johnson and tyreek stevenson but he definitely has a role on this team and it was good to see him back out there on saturday but like i said it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows for the bears there were a couple l's um, that a few guys took or a few thing or a few um, plays or something like that. Um, the number one thing was that the starting offense looked rough. I don't know what it is. Maybe the starters haven't played enough together because guys have been out, guys have been taking rest days. It hasn't seemed to affect the defense so much, but that's because they've been playing in the same system. Really, the starting offense has been a little bit shaky going into these preseason games. You know, the incompletions, you know, the miscommunication, you know, some of the drops have been kind of brutal going into the preseason. And, you know, going into week one, you kind of want to have those things ironed out going into week week one to where you don't have to struggle like you usually do going into the first part of the season and you know for the talent that we have on this offense i would expect the starting offense to at least score a touchdown against the backups for cincinnati and they weren't able to do that in fact i don't even think they had like a first down um for their first few possessions so again it's preseason you're not showing everything you know the play calls haven't become too diverse yet but you would still like to see them ramp it up a little bit and i think as we get later as we get closer to the week one of the season i think come week one of the season we'll see a little bit better results of this first string offense but on saturday they really struggled and that really piqued a lot of people's interest that made a lot of people worried ultimately i'm not hitting the panic button yet but i'd like to see the first string offense you know get that timing down with caleb and you know make him a little bit more comfortable and let's start putting points up on the board as well loser number two dominique robinson 
I'll keep this short. Dominique Robinson has not flashed like some of the other pass rushers on this team. Um, of course, we know about Austin Booker. He's been this. He's kind of been a sleeper in this preseason. You know, everybody's been talking about Caleb and Odunze, but he's been consistently winning this preseason. His motor, his raw, his pass rushing, even though raw, has been unreal. He's constantly in the backfield. He's a great power rusher. Um, he's starting to get a little bit of finesse to him as well, and he's been showing things. He's been flashing. Um, there's this other guy. His name, I think, his name is Daniel Hardy, um, and he's been flashing. He he's been flashing, especially in that last game. He had a sack. Um, I think he had two sacks, and he had a lot of tackles that game as well. And he's been constantly in the backfield. And it's just, you know, for Dominique Robinson, a guy who was drafted in the fifth round, um, not a couple years back. You know, they the Bears had a few had didn't have I wouldn't say they had lofty expectations, but a lot of guy a lot of people had expectations for Dominique Robinson, and we had a glimmer of hope that first season, his rookie season, when they went up against the 49ers and he was able to beat Trent Williams um, for a sack. But since that play, he hasn't really flashed much at all this preseason. In fact, I think most of his snaps have gone down this preseason. Preseason for a guy like him at an already contested position with guys like Demarcus Walker sitting there, the aforementioned Austin Booker, and, and now this dude, Daniel Hardy, you know, what's going to be his role on this team if he is even on this team come week one? So I'm not saying he's getting ready to get cut, but he really needs to put together a strong performance going into this last game as he's on. he might be on the bubble as the Bears might be looking at Daniel Hardy and Austin Booker um, being key contributors on this team and for a guy like Dominique Robinson who was drafted in the fifth round it's never good to have guys who you know who are behind you and both in experience as being rookies and some guys who weren't even drafted you know um, performing better than you in these preseason games especially against backups so you know I would say Dominique Robinson would be my second loser of the game or and mainly of this preseason and point number three, loser number three, it'd probably be Soldier Field. The field conditions on Saturday were not all that great. Um, they had just had a concert. Um, and if you watch the videos, if you see Ryan Poles walking on the field, pointing out things that are coming apart on the field, um, it's not great, man. That that field can get torn up at times. And it's just a, a lot of things that go on in that stadium. Um, it's, it's kind of like a multitask thing. They do concerts there. They do shows there. And it really messes up the field. This is not a new issue. This goes back to last year and previous years. But it seems like it's getting worse every single year. I mean, you could literally see the seams of the field coming like loose. Um, and that's not good for anybody going to a game. That increases the risk of injury. And it's just not aesthetically pleasing to people either. That and the fact that the borders weren't painted in that preseason game cost us a touchdown. As I truly believe Romo Dunze would have been in bounds if the borders were painted even though he still has to be aware of where he is on the field you know if the borders were painted he probably wouldn't have been out of bounds and he probably would have got that touchdown that caleb williams threw to him so the grounds crew they got to do better man they got to do better i know they were rushing um but still you know and, it, and it's about time for the bears to move out of soldier field it's it's been time but it's it's about time for them to move out of soldier field and get a new stadium anyway hopefully Kevin Warren is working his magic up there and, and figuring out a way to get us a new stadium here. Um, but overall, the field conditions on Saturday were not great. And that might start, if it gets too bad, that might start costing you games. But overall, a lot more pros and cons in this preseason. A lot of talent on this team, a lot of depth on this team. Guys are coming back as well so we're getting closer to week one of the season i'm um, going into this final preseason game i don't expect the bears to play their starters if they do play i don't expect them to play much um but you know we got the chiefs on thursday um this will probably be the final chance for guys who are on the bubble or guys who want to you know make certain point certain uh, roles on this offense or defense on this roster um so it's going to be this la their last chance to compete for a roster spot. And, you know, they're going to be going hard out there. So, you know, it, it's been a good preseason. We got our core guys ready to go. We've seen the talent of our rookies. Now we're just focused on week one of the season. And I can't wait for that. 
But that's pretty much it for me, you guys. I probably won't do another preseason video if the Bears don't play their starters on Thursday. So I'm going to get up out of here. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video as it helps your channel grow. Make sure you guys hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I drop one of these Bears videos. As always, follow me on social media as I post a lot of really good stuff on there um i will be coming out with some gaming videos soon i'm just trying to decide which one um so be looking out for that but i hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you bear down and i'm out peace